Hello and welcome to Sunday Night. I'm Chris Barth. Tonight, an Australian television first. After a lifetime of deafness, a loving dad of three children will have his cochlear implant switched on and you'll see and hear it happen live. Here and around the world, so many children are able to hear thanks to the wonders of Australian invented cochlear implants. And now more and more adults are switching on as well. The family you're about to meet, Tim, Natalie and their three children, Laura, Ryan and Emily, are one of the nicest and most loving families around. But what makes them remarkable is that mum and dad were born profoundly deaf. They've never heard their children speak, never heard them say, I love you. Their only communication has been sign language and lip reading. But thanks to the cochlear implant, tonight their lives will change. Helen Kapalos' report begins with a little boy who's just broken the sound barrier. I hate this off. I can't hear you. That would it back on. It was the week before Christmas last year when Noah Hill had his cochlear implant switched on. Every time I watch it, it takes my breath away. Every time I show somebody else, it's like watching it for the first time. And I've probably watched it a million times. It's, it's a magic, it's a really, for me as a mum, it's a, it's, it's a gift. So it's a magic moment for us. Are you bored? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and He's enjoying discovering new noisies, as he calls them. And what are noisies? Noisies are things that he didn't know made noisies. We can hear her. Yeah. Wow. That made it. Not animal. What was it? Wow. Dan and Michelle had no idea they both carried a genetic defect that could be passed on to their children. Noah's older sister, Grace, who's seven, was also born deaf. Grace has two cochlear implants. Two people. Noah has one. <laughs> Thanks to the all Australian invention, they're now both exploring what deaf people call the hearing world. What about, can you hear music? Entering the hearing world is what Switch On is all about. Hi, Cooper. <gasps> Hi, Cooper. <laughs> Hi, Cooper. Do you hear me talking? Cora is about to hear for the first time. How about right there? Yeah. Do you hear me talking? No. Her husband, James, is on the camera. How's my voice sound? Yeah. <laughs> How's my voice sound? Yours is loud. Okay. Different from mine. Different. <laughs> what do you think? It's amazing. <laughs> For many, those first sounds are overwhelming, even frightening. Okay, now then. Can you pick up my voice? That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
some adults who've been profoundly deaf their whole lives choose not to break the silence, preferring the world they know. Most people don't like it. Most people don't like it. You get used to it. Your brain will get used to it. OK? But with the cochlear technology now so advanced, more adults than ever are choosing to switch on. that Tim and Natalie are both deaf and can dance to funky town, even though they can't hear a word, are just some of the things that make this couple unique. How would you describe your dad? A comedian. Does dad jokes all that lot. We, we are, are family. family. I got all my sisters with me. Dad makes sure he He's, nev he's never disadvantaged. We're great. Where are we going? Tim has never heard his children speak. But with the help of hearing aids, can vaguely hear high or low frequencies, like the rumble of thunder. His wife, Natalie, is even more profoundly deaf. How would you describe your mum? Like a normal mum, but super. <laughs> mum? Mum. I love her. <laughs> More than a mum. She's like my best friend. Yeah. So you don't feel like that you've missed out on anything because no, of their not. deafness? Because deafness, I think it's bring us like, closer. Yeah. Are you worried that one of you will hear better than the other? Nah, that doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not a competition. We will help each other. Yeah. Natalie grew up in the southern suburbs of Sydney. Tim in the north. He was born premature. We weren't sure for the first few days whether he'll actually make it or not. Uh, so it was a pretty traumatic time yeah. for both of us. That's true. He was 18 months old when his mum, Jan, had his hearing checked. Straight after, she rang her husband, Roger. And I said, now I've got bad news. We heard his step. Anyway, Roger said, well, just hang on. And, you know, drove straight home. He just, uh, and then we both had a big cry. And, uh, mm. But, he's, I mean, he's perfect now to yeah. us anyway. <laughs> The cause of Natalie's deafness was a virus. Her mum, Val, caught German measles early in her pregnancy. Well, she was 10 months old before we found out that she was deaf, before it was confirmed. Um, devastated. And what about you, Brian? What was it? What was that day like for you? Um, <laughs> it's devastating. What devastated you the most about it? She wouldn't talk. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you realised that she was deaf, did you feel that her life would be compromised in some way? Yes, because she was going to have a handicap, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. 
Natalie was enrolled in a school for the deaf where she learned to lip read and talk. How has going to a place like the Shepherd Centre helped you? That, that, that helps you talk the best. And I've we been all over life. I've been just all over too. Tim also went to the Shepherd Centre and both then attended regular high schools. They met at a Shepherd Centre reunion when they were in their mid-teens. A few years later, things got serious. What was so special about her? Uh, her smile, her eyes, the way she communicate, body language, everything. They began dating and loved dancing. They couldn't hear the music, but got the good vibrations. He brought uh, Natalie home and uh, we were spellbound. She's beautiful. Yes, they make a lovely couple, don't mm. they? <laughs> and right from the start, he was smitten. Oh, yes, 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 yes definitely. Yeah. definitely. It was only going one way once they met. <laughs> <laughs> Down the aisle. Yeah. Right? They settled down, had a family, and built a life. Natalie is a full-time mum. Tim works for Legal Aid. They've never heard each other speak, never heard their children. And for Natalie, that's a constant source of frustration. You cry. Bye. If I'm, for example, my son Ryan, when he comes home, if he comes home early from school, he'll come out behind me and I get such a shock. He thinks it's funny when I scream and get a shock from it, but they do it every time. You know, he especially thinks it's quite funny. So I want to be able to hear footsteps so I know that when the kids are coming up behind me. The cochlear implant could change that. It turns sound into electric impulses that are sent to the inner ear, then transmitted to the brain, bringing noise to once silent worlds. So why now, at the age of 44? Within, oh, I think it's the right time. I just waited for the technology to upgrade a bit. And we've been talking through it for three years and decided to have it. It's going to be better for them. Like, the world that they know is going to change, but... <sighs> because people think they're disadvantaged because they're deaf. Tell me if you think these things make a noise. Breathing. Ah. What about eating? No. And this one is from Laura, your eldest daughter. She wants to know if you think that farting makes a noise. Am I okay saying it? No. I haven't heard anything, but I smell it, of course. The day before their cochlear implant operations, Natalie and Tim went to one of the noisiest places in Sydney. As excited as they are about the wild ride ahead, no one is more excited than Natalie's dad. As soon as she said she's getting up at the end of me. Is it because it's about to open up a whole new world, your world, in a sense, yeah. to her? I think that's part of it, yeah. She's going to be more part of it. Well, we hope, but we don't know. We don't really know how much she's going to hear. What's the first thing that you're looking forward to hearing? Um, maybe the waves from the beach, the wind.
At Sydney's Westmead Private Hospital, Natalie is prepped first. Are you nervous? No. You're allowed to be. My leg, my leg. Oh, your legs are nervous. No. Good luck. Doesn't. Close. Lovely. No problems with managing those stairs before. Feeling better? Hmm? Nice? Good, good. Each operation will take two hours. It's a first for this surgical team operating on a husband and wife on the same day. What we don't know is whether they'll both experience the same outcome. It's delicate surgery when you're drilling this close to the brain. Just a slow insertion. About half the electrodes are in now. The remainder of the electrodes going into the cochlea very easily. As soon as Natalie's operation is over, it's Tim's turn. They sign I love you to each other. And once Dad is done, it's time for Emily, his daughter, to pay a visit. Oh, okay. She's fine, do it. For both Tim and Natalie, their outcomes are unknown. Their wounds have to heal before their bionic ears can be switched on. Okay, I'm okay. Mum died. We are okay. The moment the sound barrier is broken <laughs> feels different for everyone. Here, the audiologist hides her mouth so a young man who's never heard before Orange. can't read her lips. Red. Red. Black. Black. Yellow. <laughs> Yellow. Oh. Purple. Purple. <laughs> After the switch on, what's the first thing you want to say to Natalie? What's the first thing you'd like her to hear? The first word I would say, I love you, with the voice. You've been thinking about that for a while. Yep, I've been thinking about that for a while. I'm sure to like to hear that. Hi there. I'm good. Good. Hi. On Wednesday, it was Natalie's turn. She's been deaf since the day she was born 44 years ago. How are you feeling? A bit Ooh, nervous. Quite mm. All her family are here. I'm just dying to see her face. Are you dying to see her face when she hears you speak for the first time? I'm just dying to see her face when she hears sound. Hello. Any sound? Lip breathing. No sound. Lip breathing's good. Natalie's implant is connected to a computer which will control the first sounds she hears. Magic spot. Okay. Now I'm not sure when you're going to start to hear, so I'm just going to do it slowly because I don't want you getting a shock. Love me too. Like a whistle. Love me too. Yeah, okay. good. Okay. Hello. Okay. Maybe the computer won't let me because I went up too much. The moment happens unexpectedly. It's very good at not letting me do things. Yeah. Hey. Too much? Come on. Come on. Okay. That's right. I just noticed the computer was saying no. Okay. Hello. Yeah, hi. Hi. Can you hear oh, my voice? Yes. Hello. Not yet. No, 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 no head. I'm giving you a headache. Hey. Can you hear? How loud is that? Clear. Good. Good. Excellent. Okay. What about this one? 
<laughs> that's, different. that's different. It is different. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I love you. Oh, you want to say hello? Good. So you're hearing different pitches. Oh, very different from your mind. Very different from a hearing aid. Very, very different. Okay. Is it too much? You want me to turn it down a bit? A little bit there. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll tilt it. Okay. All right. Okay. Is that a bit better now? Okay. Hey, better. Better. Oh, my God. That's fabulous. That's well done. You switched on, girl. That's great. Okay. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> all that's left now is Tim. We're all waiting for that. <laughs>on Sunday night you saw the sheer joy as Natalie heard sounds for the first time as her cochlear implant was switched on. Well now it's her husband Tim's turn. Now remember they've been married for 21 years and the only way they've been able to communicate between themselves is by sign language <coughs> and lip reading. Tim has never heard the sound of his children's voices. Well, now is the moment he's waited a lifetime for. He's not that nervous. He was so relaxed earlier in the studio, he was actually yawning. So he's quite <laughs> excited about this moment. <laughs> Audiologist Carol Amos is now tweaking Tim's cochlear ear and hopefully he'll begin hearing noises. Carol? So the important thing to know, it's not going to sound normal. It's very strange, very robotic. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, it might be a bit soft. I'm going to have to bring it up as well. Okay, here we go. Hello. Can you hear anything yet? Just a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to come up. Okay. Is that a bit more now? Okay. I don't want to get there too... Make it too loud. Okay. A little bit more. Can you hear my voice at all? Not yet? No. That's Not okay. Yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. All right. How about now? Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. A little bit yeah, now? Yeah, a little bit. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that too loud? A little bit too loud. A little bit too loud. It's okay. Is that more comfortable? Is that more comfortable now? Yeah, that's better. Can a little you bit down. Can you hear my voice? Do funny? Funny, really funny. Down. Can you hear this? Yeah. Okay, what about this? Yeah, well... Uh, can you hear yourself? Um, yeah, I can. Well, it's very strange. Very strange. Very strange. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to say something? Very happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I Your love, turn. I love you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> now, little one, be voice to Dad, will you? Say, big voice. I love you. I uh, heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, come and say hello. Like my voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love you too. Yeah, we should go. Oh no, we, we, we're going, we're going, we're going. Yeah. Is it too loud? Um, it's just it's very strange. Sorry, um, robotic. Yeah. Yes, very robotic. robotic. And your brain's got to get used to it. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. But is that comfortable? Not too loud? Maybe I'll put it down a bit. A little bit, no worries. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Love to come. Just love you. Okay. Got that? <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Tim. Thank you. Tim, what's it like? Very <laughs> weird. <laughs> what are you hearing? Um. Oh, 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 oh,
Just so these are the sisters. Careful guys, you don't pull coming in now. Tim sisters coming yep. to say congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Now Roger, I know you must have popped a lot of champagne corks in your time at family celebrations. What was it like seeing Tim flinch? Oh, I was very, very surprised the way he jumped. And it was fantastic, you know. So very, very proud of him and Natalie, of course, you know. But uh, it's opened a new life for Tim, I'm sure. Are you it's a journey? Very different. Hello. Take a while to. It does. Yeah. That normal? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Your brain's never heard this way before. It's like playing the piano on your nerve. Right. Very, so very strange. Another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carol, yes. effectively, yes. Tim has to learn what sounds he's hearing, doesn't yes. he? Yes. I say to people, it's like learning a foreign language. Really? You don't learn French overnight. You've got to work yeah. at it. Get used to the sounds. Yeah. And that's his brain learning. Yeah. To yeah. And a baby like takes... Like a brain shock. A brain shock, <laughs> yeah. yes. What's and the brain would normally... A baby takes a little while before they actually you know, yeah. develop language. So it's a bit shorter for you because you know what words are. But you've still <laughs> got to go moment. through no. it, getting used to, you know, what does this sound like and what does that sound like? It's a, yeah. a journey. Good luck. Right. Yes. All right, Tim. Thank you very much for sharing that moment for us. We're going to enjoy the celebrations and we're going to be back with more in just a moment. Our thanks to Tim and Natalie and their families for all their help in tonight's program. We wish them well in their new world of sound.